With bearings installed, next is checking the inf inflow. Uh, but normally, you only need to um, check it when it was um, if you replace the big ends. But I just want to double check it before I reassemble the engine um, properly um, to make sure it was set up correctly in the first place. So what I need to do is just assemble the um, crank in here, put the cases together, and then measure the end float and see if it is correct. And then um, if it is, um, I'll just use the existing shim, which I've found on the side here. Um, if it is incorrect, I've got a pack of five shims here with different sizes, and I can put the correct size in. So next is cleaning the crank case. So I don't want to use water or anything, but I just want to try and get rid of this, but I want to only lightly clean it. So I'm going to just use um, an oil, just a simple cleaning oil, and just lightly clean this off. One thing I've noticed is the um, flywheel is not, definitely not a D14 flywheel. There should be rivets here. So I assume this um, flow was off a B175 or a later model Bantam of some sort the um, D14 had rivets here that used to come out and um, wreck the engine so maybe that's what happened on this bike many years ago the original crank the shim the um, rivets came out and trashed, trashed the um, top end of the engine It's all set up to um, measure the end flow. So I'll try this method first. Put a few screws into the cases that um, tie the two cases together. I'll screw the bolt the two cases together. I've got this um, dial gauge and I'm clamping down the um, engine stand onto the table so it doesn't move when I um, move the crank back, back and forth. So I'll see how accurate this is. The, the other method, if this doesn't work, is using feeler gauges in the top here. But I'll try this method first. Like doing it with the dial gauge, I think it's about 8 thou, 10 thou, and it needs to be um, between 4 and 6 thou. But the problem with doing the dial gauge, even with clamping this down, the wood, there is a bit of movement in the wood, so I wasn't 100% accurate. So I'm going to use this method using the um, filler gauges instead. But it does feel like there's more than 6 thou of movement in there with the two shims that were originally in there. So if I push the crank back, I can get a 25 down there with a bit of a squeeze. So 20, I suppose this would be 25 thou. So I'd say it's possibly more likely 24 thou. Yeah, so I'd say it's 23, 24 thou gap with the crank pushed that way. The 25 thou is a real tight squeeze to get that in there. Now if I move the crank this way, we'll say it's 24 thou, I'll write that down. And we'll try 15. 15 is too tight, so 15 thou doesn't fit down there. Try 12. That fits. So it's in between 15 and 12. Try 14. Fourteen. It's just a nice yeah. It's fourteen thou. So the gap with this open, it's twenty three, twenty four thou, and with it um, pushed the other way, it's fourteen, fourteen thou. So it's 10 thou movement 
on this um, crank. So that's four thou over, so I need to um, adjust the shims. So I'll put a 10 thou sh um, shim on the drive side and I've spaced it out here with a 10 thou and a 4 thou um, shim on this side. So if I push the crank across, it's quite, I'd say it's 25 to 25 to 26 thou, it's quite loose just feel it, feel it catching so it's either 25 to 26 thou if I push it across that's definitely 21 thou So 25 thou fits in there, so it's either 26, 25 thou, roundabouts there, and it's 21 thou on the other side, so it's just within tolerance. That's as accurate as I'm going to get it with these. Ideally I'd want a metal stand and use the dial gauge, but this is as accurate as I'm going to get it. So I'd say it's about 5 thou. Um, so I'm happy with that. Next is the gearbox. Anyway, thanks for watching.